Control, Season 2, Episode 1. Um, we back, Patrol. <laughs> I forget the name of it. Uh, this is uh, this is pretty interesting. And, you know, they gave us... Well, first of all, the show's running on both HBO Max and DC Universe. And I'm subscribed to both, so... I don't know how I feel about that, but, um, you know, so they gave, but they gave us the first three episodes right out the gate. So, you know, we have a lot to, we definitely have a lot to come you know, to, to go over, but we'll start with the first episode and, you know, and just, just like fairly just work our way down. I did, um, I did not know that the episode would start <laughs> pretty much a couple of weeks, maybe a month after the season finale because in the season finale of season one you know they were in the painting they were they were with danny the street and you know they defeated mr nobody they trapped mr nobody in a, in a painting and they all got shrunk ended up in a cockroach the cockroach exploded and that's how they survived like the nuclear apocalypse so apparently i didn't think them being shrunk was a big deal. I just thought like, okay, they shrunk. That's what they needed to do to get out of the situation. And then we'll move on. Come to find out they're still shrunk and <laughs> they're living in Cliff's Lego sports track that he, um, that he built for himself in season one, which is pretty damn funny. So that, it, it, you know, so again, and I, I was very surprised by that because I didn't, I honestly didn't think the shrinking thing would be such a big deal, but apparently it is. Um, <laughs> Now, Larry, he's the only one who wasn't shrunk, so he's been taking care of them, giving them food, making them like little tiny pancakes and little lunches while both he and, you know, and the chief try to figure out a way to make them grow again. They take us to a scene with the chief's daughter because that's what the whole thing was about. Like the whole thing, like the, the entire point of the season was Mr. Nobody was trying to find chief's daughter. He found chief's daughter and when he found the daughter... You know, like, you know, he tried to, like, hold her hostage. You know, the, the gang went in to go save her. They saved Dorothy, and now she lives with them. But they showed us, when the episode started, they showed us a flashback. Actually, you know, honestly, I don't know if it's a flashback or um, a future prediction. I don't know when this happened in the timeline because I was under the impression that Dorothy was still living in the mountains. <laughs> until. But then when her mom died, you know, the chief took her and put her with um, with Danny the street. So I have no idea when this girl was in the circus, but apparently Dorothy was in the circus. Um, they were using her power because she has the, the ability to manifest i guess like her imaginations or her dreams like she can like if she thinks about a wolf she can create a wolf or or maybe she just has certain specific creatures that you know imaginary creatures that she can just conjure up and you know and materialize in the real whenever she she's whenever whenever she sees fit the same way how you know how jane has different personalities living inside her like it's kind of similar but um but not really you know, so the ringmaster of the circus, he was making he was making Dorothy use her power to conjure up the wolf or the demon or whatever, which what, what one of those things were. And these men, these these manifestations can talk to Dorothy like they can communicate with each other. And they were basically telling Dorothy they didn't want to do the show. But she was like, you know, just please do it. You know, it'll be over soon. You know, and she was crying because. I guess like the creature that she conjured didn't like the the spotlight or being whooped by the ringmaster or you know being gawked at by people. You know Dorothy felt the pain, she was crying, and then it just got to the point where her manifestation just got mad and just slaughtered everybody and killed all the people at the circus. And obviously everybody blames Dorothy for that because they feel like she's the one who forced the manifestation to do that, but that's yet to be determined if she if she made the manifestation kill everybody out of her own personal anger and fear, or if these things really do have a mind of their own. So that was the flash. That was the, the, the separate scene. So <laughs> I guess it was a flashback because, you know, because she's still dealing with that now. So now, but she shrunk, she shrunk with everybody in, in, in Legoland. And each individual member has been going through their own personal ish since, you know, the whole Mr. Nobody situation was dealt with. Larry, right out the gate, he's like him and him and the him and the negative the negative spirit. They're still going back and forth, you know, with their whole dynamic. And the negative spirit force, he's showing Larry visions of his kids, visions of his son. He took him back to a time where his son had made a paper airplane for him, and then he kind of like, and then Larry kind of like criticized his, cause you know, Larry was a test, he was a, he was a, he was a pilot. He was a test fighter, he was a test pilot. So when his son made it a paper airplane, 
Larry took it and he was just like, oh, this is great, son, but this should be here and that should be there. And then his wife was like, well, that's how he wanted to build it. Just let him build it how he wants to build it. And the Larry was like, but he's doing it wrong. Like, it's very weird to see Larry be a dick to like his wife and his kids only because when he's with the Doom Patrol all bandaged up, he's the most timid, like, <laughs> you know, like friendly, like friendliest person. So, you know, but obviously, but tragedy can do that to you. So, you know, and then, you know, Larry was a little confused because he was just like, he didn't understand like why the negative spirit was showing him events from you know like like events from his past where he was being an ass to his children and then the spirit took him to another vision of where his son you know grew up on drugs and like alcohol and you know basically you know became um became a deadbeat and he was in the hospital or whatever and then you know later on his son his son passed away so the son that he was mean to ended up passing away so larry knows that one of his kids are gone and i guess he still has his because he had two kids his other son is still out there so since the first son is now deceased i guess maybe larry will bump into the other son at the funeral maybe he won't but um i feel like the other son will play a factor like into into larry's story like the, this particular season Jane, she is she's still on the drugs. She's still because, you know, because last season, you know, when the whole group split up, she was taking like heroin or whatever to kind of like numb the pain. And she's still doing it. She's still taking drugs. She's still smoking weed. She's still um shooting up, shooting up that hair, that hair <laughs> you know, so and um she's I mean, Jane just doesn't care anymore. Like, I mean, Jane always didn't care. But now she just like she's just like, fuck it. You know, like like Jane's literally trying to kill herself. But the problem is. It's upsetting the other 63 personalities that live inside her. There was even a moment where the other personalities, like they all met in the underground and they were telling Jane, they were just like, they gave her an intervention, <laughs> like to an extent. And they were just like, yo, stop, you know, stop taking drugs. Like stop killing, you know, stop, you know, like you're killing us. And then one of the personalities even said to her, she was just like, it's not about you. It's not about the rest of us. It's about the girl. Remember, we're here to save the girl. We got to, you know, we're here to protect the girl. And then, you know, like, and then Jane's like, fuck the girl, <laughs> you know? So, and, 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 and I think that's going to be addressed. Like this whole thing about, I mean, cause I, I mean, obviously like the girl, the, the girl is Jane, but there's something deeper. Cause they even, they even touched on that last season where, they were just like, we have to protect her. And I'm like, who is her? I feel like there's another personality who's probably like Jane's like youthful childhood self that was molested when she was a kid. And that's the that's the that's the personality in the underground that they're all trying to protect. But we'll um but we'll see. I mean, aside from smoke smoking weed and talking a cliff, like not too much um not not too much happened with um <laughs> with Jane aside from us knowing that she got a drug problem and you know the underground is basically in an uproar. Uh, who are we missing here now? Cliff, <laughs> Cliff is doing different things to uh, keep himself busy. You know, he's working on the he's working on the little toy cars. He's working on the track. He's build he's working on his Lego project. But he also has this hobby of getting his frustration out. And they took us to some some flashbacks with Cliff too. They took us to a flashback where we met his dad. And his dad was kind of like, you know, like a deadbeat. He was abusing her mom. He cheated on his mom, like on her, he cheated on his mom all the time. And Cliff's wife, you know, this is before I guess Cliff became like a famous race car driver. Cliff's wife basically didn't like the dad. And she told Cliff that, listen, I don't want your dad at our wedding because if your dad shows up, like if both of your parents are there, it's going to be a problem. And between both of them, I'd rather your dad not be there than, um, than your mom. So Cliff told, you know, so Cliff told his dad, he was like, listen, you know, you know, she doesn't want you there. And then the dad was just like, fuck yo, bitch, <laughs> you know, and he was just like, you know, you think you're going to get married and be happy? You know, it's like, it's not going to last. And then, you know, he basically like left with a, he basically left like in a very bitter state. And I mean, obviously his dad's deceased because when Cliff's, when Cliff's dad was alive, this was probably like what, 1975 <laughs> or something like this. Cliff is old. Cause like all, remember like all the Doom Patrol, like Rita's like damn near 100 years old. So everybody else, so I'm like, I don't think like, it's weird because the whole thing with the dad with, you know, I guess they're trying to say that Cliff, cause you know, Cliff cheated on his wife as well. And then that was part of the reason why they got into the car, the car crash and the car accident. But I don't see how his dad plays into that other than letting us know that's where Cliff got his dick, his dickish behavior from. And if Cliff learned to be a, a horrible husband and a horrible father from his father and his father's no longer alive, I don't see the relevance and why we, we need to know about Cliff and his dad. But 
I guess I don't know. Like maybe he's not dead. Who knows? But um, I don't know. Some some something will happen with that. But anyway, so Cliff um Cliff, you know his frustration with the whole situation and being shrunk or whatever. He's working out his frustration. Like <laughs> there's um there's a hole in in Doom Manor, where um where the rats live, and Cliff every day takes a small amount of food. He goes to the rat hole. He puts the he puts the um the cheese or the food by the rat hole, and then when the rat comes out, like the dad, because it gets us like it's a family of um of rats of mice or whatever. When like the dad rat comes to get the food, Cliff basically whoops the rat's ass. <laughs> so Cliff is out here fucking up mice, you know, just to um you know just to make himself feel better, uh, <laughs> which was uh which is pretty damn funny. Um, Rita, <laughs> Rita. Rita, uh, I mean, Rita spent the whole last season basically being the coward of the group. She was the one that was afraid, you know, to get involved, and she never wanted to get involved. And her whole thing was like, "I'm not gonna, I'm not going to get involved because I'm Rita Farr," you know, like all this bullshit. And then, um, I guess, but after she helped save the chief's daughter, you know, and she, you know, she did some good, like towards, like, like Rita, Rita did a lot of good in in season one. And I guess because she did a lot of good, she now thinks she could become a superhero like Cyborg. And she's trying to, she asked, she actually, she asked Victor to teach her how to teach her how to use her powers so she could become a superhero. I mean, I feel like Cyborg's only doing it just to have something to do, but I don't think Cyborg really believes that she wants to be a hero. It's like, I feel like Cyborg thinks that she can be a hero. I just don't think he believes that she wants to because Rita also has this habit of being very selfish. And if you're cyborg, you're just like, well, if she wants to be a hero, there's got to be an ulterior motive behind it. But so far, so good. You know, like she's working on her power. She's working on like her stretching abilities and everything. You know, cyborg helped her out with it a little bit. You know, he showed her some tricks and and stuff and it started working and then we saw at the end of the episode you know like she you know she 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 was she, she was able to get it together because her whole thing was she wants to stop being a blob and just want to learn how to stretch and like use her powers like in a in a different way but um that but that was pretty much it for um you know for for Rita's storyline at least in the first episode cyborg he's still dealing with the trauma that when it, when Mr. Nobody got in his head and then he then he whooped his daddy's ass <laughs> so cyborg's still going through the trauma of that and and it's like he's seeing things like He's seeing Mr. Nobody in his dreams. He every day Cyborg looks at the painting. He goes to the painting and he looks at the painting that Mr. Nobody's trapped in. So he's he's very obsessed. And his obsession is creating like delusions of him. And he's starting to hear things and see things that aren't really there. And, you know, he even spoke to Rita about it. And Rita said she was just like, you know, like we hear you at night when you have nightmares talking about Mr. Nobody about what you did to your dad she was just like you know like we're here for you if you want to talk and then he was just like I don't need help from you people because I'm cyborg I'm supposed to be a superhero you know so he um you know he str he struggled a lot of, he struggled a lot with that you know with the with the demons of um of the last episode like I said I didn't think that would still be an issue for him but apparently it is and I said he's trying he's trying to work his way through it slowly but it, it is really affecting him to the point where he's not even sure if he should be out, if he should be, if he should be out there being a superhero, because mentally, like he's all like fucked up in the game. Like there was even a moment where they were trying to like help Dorothy and Cyborg, like kind of ruin that because he thought he saw Mister Nobody and he started freaking out, and then they had to calm him down. Um. So now, the the chief, he's trying to figure, he's trying to figure out a way to make everybody tall again. You know, had how, how to embiggen everybody. Um. Rita had said to him, because remember, like there was like that Constantine-like character, like that wizard warlock guy. You know, the fat dude with the with the with the coat, with the trench coat. Um, Rita was just like, why don't you just ask him to use his magic? And then he was like, no, I'm not gonna use, I'm not gonna ask him. He was like, the chief was trying to come up with his own way to try to get, you know, to try to get them to to grow again, and it wasn't working. And then he started seeing the toll that the shrinking was taking on everybody, the anger, the frustration. You know, him and Jane got into an argument where Jane cursed him out. Like everybody's not fucking with the chief. Like nobody's like, like the only person that's really talking to him is Rita. Like nobody else is really talking to him. So, you know. He got to a point where he was just like, all right, he called the magic guy and he was just like, look, I need your help, you know, to get everybody big again because they've suffered enough and I don't want to put them through this anymore. But as we've learned in the DC universe, magic always comes with a price. So the, um, you know, the warlock was trying to, he was, he told Niles, he was just like, listen, you got to give me something in order for me to come up with the magic to make you guys grow again. So 
he couldn't come with he couldn't come up with anything and then niles had like a necklace he had like a chain like a necklace like a pendant or something around his neck and then the warlock was like well i'll take the necklace and then he was like no under no circumstances will i give up the necklace and then you know he's just like all right when you change your mind come find me and do dipped so then <laughs> so now so now dorothy dorothy she's basically she's being a kid you know while Rita's trying to become a hero. She's like, what you doing, Rita? And then she's like, nothing. And she's like, hey, cyborg, what you doing? And then she's always talking to Cliff, like, oh, you know, can I, she always, she was always asking Cliff, like, can I help you feed the rats? And he was like, no, you can't help me feed the rats. And then she went into Jane's room because for some reason, Dorothy knows about the underground. I don't know if Dorothy can sense the underground or if she has ties up with the underground, but you know, she was just like, Oh, I hear you talking to your 64 different personalities. And then Jane got mad and you know, and then Niles was basically trying to like, you know, do damage control. He was just like, leave my daughter out of this. And they're like, screw you Niles and your kid. And you know, <laughs> like nobody, like I said, like she's basically being like an annoying pain in the ass kid. And everybody was just like no <laughs> like we're not like it's bad enough we're shrunk we ain't we ain't fucking with no kids so you know they kind of like pushed her pushed her away and then even cliff like cliff you know cliff he took her on a joyride because cliff was up cliff was able to get like some of the zip cars working and then you know dorothy was like hey what you doing and he's just like fixing car so he put the girl in the car you know he took her around riding her around the track and then you know then he started freaking you know like then then she started freaking out Cliff started freaking out because he had, he started having flashbacks of when he killed his family. And then, you know, he, you know, he snapped at Jane. Um, the chief showed up and was like, don't yell at my daughter. And he was like, fuck you, chief. And, then, you know, and then, um, you know, he got and he was like, why don't you go beat up the rats to fill the void in your system? You know, and then uh, so then so that later on, the entire the entire group, the entire group is having dinner or watching a movie and while they're all watching a movie together cliff shows up with rat skin <laughs> cliff shows up with a rat skin coat and he's just like void filled asshole so he basically killed the rat and i mean that's it's sad but it was funny at the same time because he like he killed the rat and was wearing was wearing his body was wearing his skin as like as like a as like a coat so then dorothy she ends up you know leaving she leaves the uh, the Lego area and she goes to the rat hole. Um, apparently, like Cliff killed Papa Rat. There was a Mama Rat who just had a bunch of baby rats. So Cliff just murdered um, a parent of newborn rats. So Dorothy went to go see the rats. And then while she was looking at the rats, you know, she was watching like the, the baby rats, the mother feeding them. There was one little rat that kind of like, you know, broke off from the pact. So then... The gang's freaking out. They're just like, oh, where's Dorothy? Where's Dorothy? And then, you know, Cliff was just like, oh, my God, she's at the rat hole. So they all go to the rat hole. And then that's when Cliff, that's not Cliff, that's when, um, that's when Vic starts freaking out because he thought he saw Mr. Nobody. Then Rita stopped to go, you know, to go help him. So only Jane, Chief, and, um, and Cliff went to the rat hole. And they saw the moment where the mama rat, because there was like one little baby rat that broke off from the pack. And the mama rat basically killed the baby rat. And I think somebody said something like, it, the mom recognizes the weakest one in the pact because it tried to run, so it kills it and eradicates the weakness before it gets worse. Something it was just, it was disgusting. So then, like she killed the rat, like the rat, the mom rat killed the baby rat, and then when Dorothy saw the baby rat die, Dorothy freaked the f out, and then her power started going crazy, and you know the chief was trying to get her to like reel it in, and there was this one because we saw because we saw different manifestations different um cre creations that was talking to dorothy but there was one specific one that just sounded like the devil incarnate that just kept was like make a wish because that was another thing when she was doing the circus thing one of her manifestations kept talking to her he showed her he created like um like a birthday cake with a candle on it and he told her to make a wish and i guess she made the wish to have all the people suffer and then that manifestation killed all the people so the manifestation again now that Dorothy's freaking out, he he came back and he was just like, make the wish, child. And she's like, no. And then, you know, Niles was just like, you know, he was trying to calm her down. And then whichever, this big, bad, scary manifestation that everybody's afraid of started coming out of the tunnel, out of, you know, like out of one of the, out of one of the tunnels on the, on the Lego thing. And then Niles was just like, stop it, Dorothy, or I'll lock you up. And then she calmed down. So whatever this demon is that this girl can create has everybody peeing in their pants. And we're probably not going to see who this person is to like the second to last episode of the season, you know, so then so, so they got to calm down. And then um, so then after that, like Chief was just like, all right, fine. He called the wizard back. He was like, look, take the pendant. 
just make everybody big again because like we can't do this anymore like this shit is ridiculous and i feel and the pendant because the niles whole thing is he's afraid for his daughter because his daughter has powers and because of how she looks whatever he's afraid that his daughter is going to be taken advantage of like the government's going to get their hands on her they're going to do experiments on her and he's trying to save his daughter so niles is trying to come up with immortality for himself so he'll live he'll outlive his daughter just so he can protect her the whole point of why he created the doom patrol was so he can come up with a way to save his own ass because he was going to use because whatever whatever happened to the doom patrol to make them live longer whereas the, the negative force putting cliff putting cliff's brain in a robot rita with her rubber abilities like the doom patrol these motherfuckers are old <laughs> like they're all old like everybody in the doom like cliff cliff rita and 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 and, and larry are old so and they've developed some sort of immortality so the chief is trying to replicate that for himself but he has but he he hasn't been able to do it yet you know and he's like i'm running out of time because i'm getting old and my daughter my daughter so that pendant that he had around his neck I, I feel like it was it's magic that gave him immortality that prolonged his life so he gave that up so the wizard could you know make everybody big again and with that with that particular exchange now the chief is now getting old and he's probably going to eventually die you know dorothy asked him she was like dad are you gonna die and then he was like no i'll be here forever dear and then when he left the room her manifestation was like you know he lying right and, and then she was like no but he said he'd never leave he's like nah your daddy dead your daddy dying and again the manifestation the the creepy one the scary one he was just like make the wish child and she was like no i won't do it you know i'll do it she's like i'll do it later so apparently this manifestation has the power to save Chief's life, but for whatever reason, Dorothy doesn't want to do it because some something gonna happen with this with this manifestation. So and then and then after that, Rita she was outside working on her um working on her power, and then she learned how to control her power. She learned how to you know make her arms and her body stretch whatever. So she ran upstairs to tell Cyborg. She was like, "Hey Vic, I finally learned how to control it." And when she went in the room, Cyborg was gone. He took all his shit because apparently like i said like mentally he's all fucked up in the game and he can't he he got to get out of he's like his whole thing's like yeah, i gotta get out of this house because it's too much and like i'm fucking up so so who knows so now that cyborg's gone for a while maybe rita will now fill the void of the superhero i'd love to see a whole episode with rita just trying to be superhero <laughs> just trying to play superhero so um hopefully we get we get that it'll be called like rita rita far patrol or something but um but that, that was it that was it that was it so um good um good first episode we already know what direction we're kind of headed in, you know, you know, and um, and where things are gonna go. And we just gotta, like I said, it's, it's Doom Patrol, so it's, go, it's like you already know it's gonna be some bonker, some bonker ass shit. So <laughs> thank you for tuning in. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you think is gonna happen this season for each individual character, or just pick your favorite character and, and just let me know where you think their storyline's gonna go and what do you think's the deal with this whole manifestation thing that Dorothy's um, conjuring up and does the chief survive and make it to the uh, to the make it past the season finale does he even make it to season three so again thank you as always for tuning in um, Star Girl coming up next as well as the episodes two and three of Doom Patrol and then we got Agents of Shield so we're still rocking and rolling with this whole thing. Keep safe everybody, keep it tight, and for the Doom Patrol, I'm out this bitch!